Hi, Chris with RC Worst here. Today, I'm gonna walk you through selecting a sewage pump. When looking for a sewage pump, it's easy to get overwhelmed by a wide range of prices and seemingly endless number of options. This video will help you cut through the competition and find the right pump for your application. When shopping for a replacement pump, many people often replace their pump with the exact same model that was there before. Now, in a lot of cases, that's okay to do. To determine if that is the right move for you, consider how long the pump lasted, as well as how much the replacement will cost you. I'll include a link in the description to an article I wrote a while back about how long your pump should last for reference. So, what if the pump is discontinued or no longer available at the time that you need it? Well, the best option, of course, is to pick up the phone and call us, but for all of you do-it-yourselfers out there and anyone wanting to know what's going on behind the curtain, here we go. The first step in selecting a pump is to familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of the application itself. So we will discuss the minimum information that you will need to know to make an informed purchasing decision. Consider, what is the source? The number of toilets, whether or not it's a public or a private establishment, whether or not there's the possibility of any contaminants such as greases, fats, chemicals, soaps, and any other uh, chemical that could potentially come in contact with the pump that can cause damage. In some cases, for saline uh, situations, you may be looking at a pump that's plastic or uh, stainless steel, uh, whereas in most sewage applications, the pH is within a good level to where a cast iron pump is gonna be quite suitable for the long term. But considering the different elements and different factors that go into what the pump is actually pumping is going to put you a step ahead when it comes to selecting the construction materials of the pump. Additionally, you're gonna to wanna to consider is there a chance the pump could come in contact with anything that could damage it? Uh, and by damage the pump, I mean the impellers, the seals, and in general, the volute, perhaps the, uh, the exterior of the pump as well. There's a variety of things that the pump could suck up, uh, such as feminine hygiene products, rags, syringes, based on the location that you may or may not have control over. So selecting a pump that is perhaps a little less efficient uh, so that you can have a pump that clogs less frequently may be applicable for a light commercial application, whereas in a sump for a basement where you have a high level of control over what goes into it, you may pick a more efficient pump, lower your energy bill, and not necessarily worry about the pump plugging up because you have control over what enters it. Another thing to consider is how frequently the pump's going to operate and also for how long. A lot of pumps are rated to cycle throughout the day anywhere from a couple of dozen to a couple of hundred times depending on the pump and the design of the pump. So be aware of what the intended use is of the pump that you're looking for and consider the construction materials of that pump and how they're going to impact the performance. The last and probably one of the most important elements to consider when selecting a pump is going to be the system head requirements. And you might have said, wait a second, what are you talking about? Well, when it comes to system head, if you're not familiar, please check out our pump head video, which will have a link in the description below for a simple explanation of how to calculate this. Once you've familiarized yourself with the application, it's time to go shopping for a pump. Our goal here, of course, is to find the right pump for the job, a pump that is best suited for your specific application. Pumps by no means are one size fits all. So let's talk for a moment about what it means to find the right pump for the job. The right pump for the job will offer a balance of upfront costs and long-term life cycle costs, including maintenance and repair. In general, a more expensive pump should translate to less problems during its life than a pump costing less a higher price pump does not imply that this is true though. Optimize energy efficiency by balancing energy consumption with reliability. Maximize the overall life of the pump. So let's look at some pumps and discuss the various features to look out for so you can gain a better understanding. All right, so we have here the MSP40. This is a Myers pump and it has a 
cast iron constructed body. It also has a cast iron volute. The impeller on this pump is a semi-open split vane impeller. Uh, semi-open split vane impeller offers a pretty well-rounded balance of solids handling capability as well as efficiency. This pump features a thermoplastic impeller which is going to be ideal for lighter applications and is going to optimize the efficiency of the impeller by removing or eliminating the weight associated with a cast iron or bronze or perhaps steel impeller. The shaft seal on this pump and all of these pumps I have in front of me is a carbon ceramic type seal and the carbon ceramic type seals are great for sewage applications but are not ideal when there is a reasonable degree of sediment due to they're a relatively soft seal so abrasives are not going to be handled well by a carbon ceramic seal so keep that in mind. This particular pump has a maximum head of 25 feet. What that means is that this pump is able to lift a liquid a maximum of 25 feet. This pump has a maximum capacity to pump upwards of 140 gallons per minute. However, it is not necessarily recommended that you run it that far out on the curve. This pump features a two inch NPT discharge, though it is quite notable this pump as a sewage pump only has a one and a quarter inch solids handling rating, which is something to keep an eye out for because the solids handling capacity is a direct uh, reflection of its ability to pass solids through the pump without contacting anything in the pump or anything physically hitting the impeller or anything like that. So uh, a two inch solids handling pump would be able to pass a two inch sphere. If I had a two inch sphere in my hand, it would pass right through the pump and wouldn't necessarily have to touch anything. This one can only take an inch and a quarter. Uh, as a standard, most sewage pumps that are rated for um, a standard duty application are going to have a two inch discharge and have two inch solids handling capabilities. This particular pump is a light duty residential pump and would be ideal for a very uh, light duty application or potentially in applications where there's a minimal level of solids but a reasonable level of fluid that needs to be pumped. It has a 1650 RPM motor and uh, features a permanent split capacitor motor inside here so it's going to be extremely reliable and have a high torque startup to prevent any clogging or binding of the pump's impeller. This particular pump is a 4 tenths horsepower, so just shy of a half horsepower pump. So it's gonna offer a great amount of savings when it comes to the energy bill, as long as it's able to accomplish the job. So of course the goal with selecting a sewage pump in general is to minimize the horsepower that you need in order to maximize your energy savings and maximize your efficiency. The SP40 is available in 120 or 230 volt single phase. It's offered in standard 10 or 20 foot cord lengths. This particular configuration is a manual configuration. It's an SP40M1 or MSP40M1 as it's now known and uh, is offered with a manual configuration, no float switch or with a diaphragm float switch. The maximum liquid temperature for the MSP40 is roughly 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So up next we have the Myers MSKV50 pump. Now this is a, a quite a popular pump because it hits a great price point, it's super reliable and offers cast iron construction on both the housing and the volute. This pump is extremely reliable because it has a recessed vortex impeller. And if you're not familiar with the vortex type impeller, uh, opposed to the SP40, the vortex impeller it has a greater distance between where the liquid and solids enter the bottom of the pump uh, so that it minimizes the possibility of them coming in contact with the impeller at all, thus increasing reliability, as well as minimizing the possibility of the pump plugging, clogging, uh, becoming bound by stringy material, etc. The impeller on this pump is still a thermoplastic type impeller, and that's pretty common on these smaller pumps because it increases the efficiency by not having that heavy impeller to throw around and it also makes them a little bit less expensive when it comes time to replace the impeller. As I mentioned it has a carbon ceramic seal and this pump is capable of a maximum head of roughly 22 feet. 
And interestingly enough, this is a half horsepower pump and it does just slightly less lift than this SP40, which is a 4 tenths horsepower pump. And you can kind of see the correlation of efficiency. Greater solids handling capability with this pump means its maximum head or its ability to lift is a little bit depreciated. Um, this pump does, however, have an, a greater capacity for moving water at 180 gallons per minute approximately and a true two inch solids handling and a two inch discharge. The motor speed on this pump is a 1650 RPM. It also features a permanent split capacitor motor, which is going to maximize the reliability factor. It is only available in 120 or 230 volt and is offered in 10 or 20 foot cord lengths. The MSKV50 pump is available in a variety of configurations, including automatic and manual configurations. We have here on the table the manual configuration, and it's also available with a wide angle float switch or a diaphragm type switch. This pump is capable of pumping liquids up to a maximum temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Up next, we have the MSKHS 200. That's a mouthful. The body construction on this pump, this is the big guy over here. As you can see, all cast iron, super heavy duty pump. It has a two vein semi-open type impeller, which is going to offer a high level of efficiency. And this pump is kind of tailored for a light commercial application or perhaps a more stout residential application and it's tuned with efficiency and solids handling capability in mind. It's going to be able to produce roughly pretty close to what this SKV50 can produce in terms of volume, but it's able to produce quite a bit more head pressure. Um, again, this one has a carbon ceramic shaft seal, as I mentioned, and is capable of about 77 feet of head uh, at shutoff, uh, though the volume isn't necessarily uh, different than the MSKV50 in that it's able to produce about 180 gallons per minute uh, at a maximum. The pump again features a two inch NPT discharge and has a maximum solids handling capability of two inch. You'll notice on this pump, as well as the pump next to it, that we have a two bolt flange and what that does is allows you to upgrade the discharge on these pumps to a three inch discharge optional. And if you needed that three inch discharge, you're gonna have to specify that uh, when you order it from us uh, because there's not an ordering option that includes the three inch discharge, that's an additional accessory. But it's nice to know that it's available. Uh, again, this motor, since we're, we're doing a, a, a ton of more head pressure on this pump, it's gonna be spinning a little bit faster. It's a 3450 RPM. And it also has a permanent split capacitor motor, which is gonna to translate to a high torque start, which is gonna be ideal for those high head situations where you've got, uh, in some cases, a lot of back pressure. And this configuration, or rather this pump is offered from half horsepower through two horsepower. This is the two horsepower model we have available. This pump's available in 115, 230 single phase, and it's available in all standard voltages in three phase. That would be 208, 230, 460, and 575 volt. So you've got plenty of options, plenty of horsepower ranges, as well as a range of performance characteristics. The cord length options on this pump standard is gonna be 10 and 20 foot length. This pump is offered in a manual configuration in the two horsepower category, but when you get down to the horse and a half, one horsepower and half horsepower models, you can also opt to buy that with a wide angle float switch. And this pump is rated to pump liquids at a maximum of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, we have the Myers SK50 pump. Now this series is a heavier duty version essentially of the MSKV series. And what it offers differently is an improved uh, motor bearing system. This pump has upper and lower bearings inside the motor. So it's gonna be better suited for longer run times or more cycles overall uh, when considering the life of the pump. Additionally, like I mentioned, the removable flange. This pump is offered in a 120 or 230 volt configuration features the same cast iron construction of the other pumps we have on the table. 
as well as a carbon ceramic shaft seal. The SK50 series pump is capable of producing up to about 115 gallons per minute and has a shutoff head of about 22 feet. Notably, the SK50 is only rated for 130 degrees Fahrenheit when it comes to maximum operating temperature of the liquid. All right, so we've kind of looked at a variety of different pumps that are on the market. There's certainly tons of other options out there, tons of different construction materials, brands, and so forth to consider when it comes to selecting a sewage pump. I hope that at least this video kind of gave you some insight into the things to look for and compare with your specific application. And I, of course, encourage anyone to reach out to anyone of our staff when it comes to selecting a sewage pump if you ever have any questions. So again, I thank you very much for watching today. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. We'll be happy to get back to you on those and we'll see you next time.